Hey YouTube, it's MooCow. Before we begin, please take a look at the definitions to the left that are going to be used throughout this video. There isn't enough time to define each term, so please, before we, be, before we continue, take a look at each of the definitions. And in addition, there's a link to my blog where you can find more information on the subject. I'm going to start with logical deduction. Now, logical deduction is the foundation for our entire modern society. Every single discipline, every single aspect of modern society is based on logical deduction. Our political system, our education system, our health system, every single physical and social aspect of our world is based on our understanding of reality, which functions upon logical deduction. However, with advances in quantum mechanics and superstring theory, which are defined to the left, as best we can define them, our understanding of reality is being shaken to its very core because we're understanding that reality is not only not real or not as real as we thought it was, but there are other realities as well. Let us begin by explaining what is quantum superposition and quantum entanglement. What quantum superposition tells us is the following. I'm going to illustrate this with the classical example of an atom and an electron. Let's take the hydrogen atom, for example. You have one nucleus, and then you have one electron orbiting that nucleus. When we look at that electron, it's going to be just in that one place, wherever we find it. It says that that electron can be every possible place simultaneously at the same time, and when it is observed is when it is chosen to be in one place. This tells us that the observer is the one that produces the effect. An experiment was done where they took one atom and they separated two electrons from it. They put the electrons as far away as possible, a couple miles away. They stimulated one electron and the other electron reacted instantaneously. This is what's called quantum entanglement. Now there's been other experiments done. For example, you take a baby rabbit away from its mother rabbit, you cause pain to that baby rabbit, and the mother rabbit will feel it. Einstein called this spooky action at a distance. As terrible as that experiment is, it was actually conducted and it does work. Though I please urge you not to experiment with baby rabbits in your house. Thank you. Now, what does this tell us, tells us about logical deduction? Well, first of all, logical deduction says that there has to be communication between the two. Otherwise, there won't be an effect. And yet we are seeing the effect. It's very difficult to argue when you're seeing it in a lab, when you're seeing it firsthand yourself. In addition, logical deduction tells us that it is illogical for something to be in two places, three places, or four places at the same time. Yet quantum mechanics has proven that things are not only in one, two, three, or four places at the same time, if not, they are simultaneously in every place at the same time. Now we have seen this in the micro level, not the macro level. It's more difficult to see things when you get to a higher state and I will explain why in just a minute. The reason why, I'm going to illustrate this with an example called Schrodinger's cat. Now, in June 7th, 1935, a scientist named Schrodinger wrote to Einstein, they were friends around the same time, about a hypothetical situation concerning quantum mechanics. This is known as the classical Schrodinger's cat. Now, the story varies depending on who's telling it, but roughly the idea is the same. Basically, you take a cat, you put it in a box, you take a vial of radioactive material, you put a hammer and a trigger mechanism with another little vial that's got an atom, say an isotope of uranium that's random and decays at a random rate. You put it inside the box with the cat. Now when it decays, a radical electron, a radical um, isotope is going to trigger the mechanism and it's going to hit the vial, spread the toxin and kill the cat. Problem is it's random and you don't know when it's going to happen. So you have two scientists, Joe and Bob, I apologize if anybody's named Joe or Bob. Joe goes in, lifts the box, the cat is dead. And Joe says, oh, that's too so bad. Before he writes that, he says, well, let me, let me go tell Bob. As Joe's going to go out, he slips, falls, breaks his neck, and dies. The lid closes. Is the cat alive or dead? Everybody's going to say, well, the cat, the cat's dead. Obviously, Joe saw it. Problem is, Joe is the only one that saw it. So Bob comes in and says, oh, my God, Joe's dead. Let me go check on the cat opens the box, the cat's alive. Quantum mechanics says that is possible. Because the information was observed, it chose a state. But when the observer was removed, the state returned to quantum flux. It returned back to its state of indeterminacy. This is what is known as quantum indeterminacy. 
So in other words, the cat returned to a state of being both alive and dead. And when the second observer walked in, we found the cat was alive. Now, it's very difficult to see this in a macro level because we have many competing observers. In other words, each of us decides how the universe is. But there's 6.5 billion of us, or almost 7 billion of us on the planet. So it's very difficult to affect things on a grander scale. On a smaller scale, they can be affected if enough people get together. And uh, I think the Princeton Global Consciousness Program has proven this. Uh, there's another program called Merlin, you may want to Google that, has also proven this. They're mapping out seas of consciousness and they're finding out that consciousness functions very similar to an ocean. What this does to logical deduction, it completely takes it out the window because cause and effect no longer apply. Cause and effect are illusions of the manifestation of consciousness. This will lead to A, the downfall of most of what we know and a reevaluation of everything that we understand to be fundamental reality. What it tells us is that not only are there different realities, but that different realities tend to mix together. That we don't exist in just one reality, we exist in a mirage of realities interacting. So each of us are quantum machines that are interacting in a virtual universe. That the table you see, the jacket that I'm wearing, my hand, everything is not as real as I thought it was. It's real in physical reality in this plane, it is not real in others. This also raises the question that our dreams are equally as real. They're just a different kind of real with different rules. Also what this says is that who we really are is a vibration, it's an energy form that exists independent of physical reality, that it transcends death. So this, these new ideas will revolutionize the future and it will also revolutionize technology. In the future, many people have asked me, do I believe in artificial intelligence? Do I believe in sentient machines? Perhaps that will be possible someday. But I don't really think we have to go that far. I think we will be the sentient machines. The line between machine and man will become so blurred that there won't really be a need for sentient machines or for artificial intelligence. We will learn to merge physical reality with other forms of technology that we will implement, mostly thought-based technologies that are being developed right now and also through the use of quantum computers which currently exist in their infancy right now. In conclusion, what I believe will happen is that science will merge with spirituality. No, this does not mean religion. Religion and spirituality are two separate things. Religion is a system of control used to enslave and manipulate masses Spirituality is our connection with the universe, our connection with nature, with reality. If you want to call it God, if you want to call it the universe or all or the energy, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. I don't think any man alive can honestly prove to you what it is. But a merging of spirituality and sciences is occurring and will continue to accelerate in the future, leading to wonderful technologies that can be used for good or for evil as any technology no doubt can be used for. It is up to each individual to decide how that person is going to manifest their will into reality. Once you understand that what you put inside is being broadcasted out, that your thoughts are also being broadcasted out because you are nothing but frequency, that nothing can be hidden, and that you are intimately tied with every part of nature and of your surroundings. If everybody starts concentrating on one thing, they will probably manifest it that way. Once this is fully realized, our view of reality, our view of society will have to shift if we want to survive, if we want to live in a world where we don't have the problems that we have, where we don't have the wars, the violence, the hunger, the hatred, the animosity that currently exists. I think it was the Dalai Lama that said, if we are to have world peace, first we must deal with the conflict inside if we are to solve the conflict outside. I believe that science and spirituality, or what we deem call spiritual sciences, will no doubt show us this. It is up to each individual to decide whether he or she will choose to manifest what he or she chooses to manifest in this world. Thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. There will be many more videos coming in the weeks to come.